the riskiest stuff I've ever filmed. That's going to be the topic of today's podcast. I'm really excited to get into this. And if I sound congested, that's because I am, because the weather sucks in Los Angeles right now. It's very windy uh, and I, I just, like I can't breathe. So why not, re- why not record a podcast, something that requires your voice when you can't breathe? Why not? Just, why not? I was supposed to film a tutorial today, but the weather is very bipolar and uh, it, it just it keeps changing its mind. So we're just going to hold off. Uh, I don't want to be rained on outside. But anyway, regardless, before we get into the riskiest stuff I've ever shot, I first want to talk to you about some equipment uh, because I do think this is important. A lot of YouTubers out there are saying, oh, equipment doesn't matter. It's just about, you know, your phone or you know, the phone, just, the phone's good enough or some stupid shit like that. But I, I <laughs> no, no, you're not going to show up to a shoot with just your phone. Okay. A phone is meant to capture maybe some, maybe, maybe some BTS shots behind the scenes. Maybe. Maybe. No, you need a real camera. You need some real lights. You need some real audio equipment. You need some real bank loans. I'm telling you. (laughs) All right. Open up a credit card, spend five grand. That will get you the equipment that you need. Sony a7 IV, two high powered Godox lights, a decent microphone, and you have some change to spare for a gimbal. Boom. That's a solid setup. Five grand to get you in the game. All right. Go full frame. That's going to last you longer and uh, you will be happier with that. Okay. You will be happier with that. Excuse me. My watch is going off because Ethereum is dropping. So I'm going to silence that. Okay. Please forgive me. I, I didn't mean for that to happen. But yeah, gear matters, guys. Don't listen to any of these people that think they're above everybody and say that creativity is, oh, no. However, however, you don't need to buy the most expensive camera gear. You need the camera gear that will allow you to boost your creativity in post-production. For example, 8-bit versus 10-bit color space. This allows you to really manipulate colors in post-production, allowing you to really change colors of anything you want. For example, I shot with the wrong white balance and my exposure was off on, on a couple shoots, right? I was shooting on my Sony a7S III. I went home and I color corrected the hell out of that thing. I changed the colors of cars and that was... I was able to do that simply because of that 10 bit color space, something you would not be able to do with eight bit. So just keep that in mind. And that will tell you why you need to invest more money into a better camera. And if you hear some gargling noises, that's my dishwasher. I apologize about that. Those are the perks of working from home. You have noises that just show up out of nowhere. Okay, cool. So now with that out of the way, the riskiest stuff that I've ever shot. And no, it's not life-threatening type of risky. It was more like, uh, what career path is this going to lead into risky? So for those of you who don't know, I, I started working with like camera equipment back in like 2011, 2012. That's literally when I picked up my first you know, pro camera was a Canon 5D Mark II. It was a DSLR camera. I freaking love that thing. It was beautiful. It was robust and it just felt good in my hands. All right. No pun intended. (laughs) Uh, 5D Mark II. Great camera. Uh, So I did like some side gigs. You know, I shot one wedding, which I didn't really like. I got hired by a company to shoot like music video uh, birthday parties for kids, which was actually kind of a fun gig, but I used like a cheap Canon camcorder from them uh, for that type of gig. So that was, that was a cool time in my life. And then, you know, I was in college at the same time. And then I, uh, I talked about this guy in, in my previous podcast. His name was David. He was a dating coach, right? I never really talked about what I shot with David. 
I said I shot some pickup videos and like some dating advice videos, but it was actually, it was more than that. It was more than that. So the dating industry is huge. All right. This is, this is the industry that actually made me think that, oh, you can actually make a lot of money from creating content. I never thought that digital content creation could make you money until I got into the dating industry. And with David, I shot like these pickup videos on how to pick up girls. You know, mainly these videos were were aimed towards men who had very low self-confidence, especially in social situations. And it really restricted men from not only just, you know, picking up girls and it it just restricted men from just talking in general. Believe it or, or not, there's another pandemic happening and it's amongst men Men are developing uh, anxiety at rapid paces right now, like social anxiety. It's getting really bad. I don't know if you've been following any trends that have been popping up lately, but uh, there's a lot of uh, women in the gym filming themselves, and then they notice a guy happen to you know walk past their shot or just stare into the camera or stare at them while they're working out and filming and then they've been calling out these men saying that they're harassing them saying that they're perverted and all this other nonsense this is accelerating the social anxiety for men it's crazy so when i was in the dating field 2014 2000 yeah 2014 was when i first got into that industry, social anxiety for men was bad. Now, now it is absolutely awful, especially with the opposite sex, especially with the opposite sex. So rewind, go back to 2014. I was filming pickup uh, and dating advice videos And David introduced me to sex coaches and other pickup artists and other dating coaches. So I started filming a lot of different videos, not porn, okay, not porn. I didn't shoot porn, but I was shooting a lot of advice videos for like, you know, sex and all this other stuff. And I came across uh, another guy, another dating coach, and he wanted to take things to the next step. Uh, to help out with the dating industry, especially for men. Unfortunately, with I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but men in the dating industry, men in dating in general, it's just like, it's falling. It's falling. So that social anxiety is really killing, killing men right now. And when I met this other dating coach, his goal was to not only make men confident out and about, you know, with women and with just people in general, but he, he, he wanted men to be comfortable in the bedroom, out of the bedroom. So I filmed a uh, semi X rated content. It wasn't porn because it was educational. Porn is mainly for entertainment. So I kind of dipped my toes into that stuff. Uh, that type of content. Uh, it was basically like sexual tutorials, if that makes sense. I don't want to go into into details on that, uh, but that's what I was shooting. That's what I was shooting for a little bit. Uh, this content was aimed to help guys be confident with their bodies and to be confident with women. And this product that I was filming was supposed to be the social anxiety breaker for, for, for men. This was supposed to be the product that just gave men the confidence to just like say hi, to just say hi, to, to, to walk with their, you know, back straight with the proper posture. Like this was the product, the revolutionary thing to make men, you know, just be proud of who they are. And the product, unfortunately, was never released. There was some drama happening in the dating industry at the time, you know, contracts and and stuff like that. But the good news is is that I think the guy that I that I was working for is thinking about releasing that product. I'll keep you updated if you're interested on that. But after I filmed uh, those videos, 
you know, I didn't think much of it for like a year or two. And then I just started thinking, wow, what would happen if somebody found out that I filmed like, you know, that those types of videos, again, it wasn't porn. It was more like sexual tutorial videos. <laughs> I it, just use your imagination. Okay. Just use your imagination, um, on, on what that could be. All right. It just, it wasn't meant for entertainment. It was meant to just help people. And I know there's videos on YouTube on, uh, you know, sexual education and stuff like that, but not this type of like in depth. All right. Let's just, let's just cut it at that. But yeah, uh, after I filmed that, those, uh, those videos, I really didn't think much of it. And then a year or two passed. And then I was like, huh, is this going to hurt my career down the line if somebody else finds out? And no, I, I don't think it will, because this was a huge part of my history that led me down the tutorial, <laughs> the tutorial path. Uh, it was just all about, for me, I didn't do it necessarily for the sexual like course or that product that he was making. I did it more because I wanted to be better with camera angles and lighting and controlling the audio. I, I brought so much gear with me to film this content. I brought my big expensive TV Canon XF 305 video camera. I was so proud to bring it. I, I brought lavalier microphones. I brought a boom mic. I brought some lights. Like I was so stoked to film this simply because it was like one of my first real production shoots where I could bring a ton of gear, you know, really think that I knew what I was doing and just like set everything up to make it look good. So I, that's what I thought of that whole entire experience. I just had that goal of just like me being better as a, a camera op, a content creator. I didn't really think that much of the subject matter. And ever since that happened, you know, it's just always been in the back of my mind. Is this going to hurt me down the line? I don't think it is. I don't think it will simply because of just the context of this product. It's, it's meant to help people. And it will help people. It just depends on uh, when and where this content will be released. But yeah, that's just like a little trip down history lane, guys, of, you know, one of the things that I've shot. You know, it's, it's pretty interesting to uh, talk about that. I think the more the different types of content you shoot, the better you are, you know, the better you are. I've also done a 48 hour, uh, film contest. Uh, spoiler alert. The, the movie was tr tremendously awful. <laughs> it was really bad, but I was really stoked to, uh, to do that. And I think that's a podcast for another time just to talk about those 48 hours because that was probably the most stressed out I've ever been. 48 hours of zero, zero, zero sleep. Yeah. 48 hours to write and to produce, and to film, and to edit, and to actually just finalize everything, and make like a, you know, a short film, so it was like, I think it was a 10 minute short film, in 48 hours, so it was absolutely batshit nuts, so yeah, I definitely want to talk about that experience for another video, but I, I thought that this, you know, little trip down history lane would have been a, you know, a fun idea for a video as well, I think it's time that we become more transparent with one another because I haven't really talked about my history that much, at least not in great detail in the past on my YouTube channel. So I'm happy that you guys know this now because uh, I can gladly say that I filmed basically almost everything that there is to film. I've been on real film shoots uh, I filmed BTS for those film shoots. The only one thing I haven't really filmed was like an actual movie, like a movie movie. I've shot with Red Scarlets and Red Epics and Red Geminis. Yeah, that was cool. But anything that actually you might have seen, I don't know. Uh, maybe I want to get into that someday. But yeah, I can, you know, I've. I, I'm just, I'm glad. I'm glad. So if you've ever had like a weird history with camera gear, I don't know, like whatever, uh, 
just think of it as an experience. Think of it as something that helps you grow, move on, and just become a better content creator or camera op or director or whatever in general, okay? Don't be ashamed of your history. As long as you didn't, didn't do any harm to anybody or, you know, you just stuck to yourself and you just did it for the betterment of your career, I think, I think that's a very positive thing, okay? I think, I honestly think that's a very positive thing. So don't be embarrassed. Uh, I'm still not embarrassed because I, I think it was just one hell of a cool experience. I think the dating industry is a very interesting industry. So if you're interested in uh, filming for dating coaches or something, I do recommend it because there's a ton of people that do this type of coaching online that desperately need uh, people that know how, to, know how to work a video camera, people that need that know how to, how to edit. Uh, they're desperately, you know, wanting to work with people like you that are listening or watching to or watching this podcast. So reach out to them, especially if you're like in Los Angeles or New York or any other popular city, I guarantee you, you're going to have people that are wanting your services and pro most likely long term if you do a good job for them. So never be scared to reach out. Okay. And in a future podcast, I do want to cover some of the techniques I use to actually captivate people's attention, especially like celebrities that I wanted to work with and how I got them to always respond to me. There has there hasn't been one celebrity or one high profile client that I didn't get to uh, not respond to me. All right. They all responded to me, all of them. And I just want to share with you with you those techniques in a future podcast. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in another one. Peace.